Uh, we have the pleasure to uh, listen to Luis Hernandez. He's going to speak about the magnetized QCD phase diagram from the point of view of chiral symmetry restoration. Luis, 25 plus 5. Okay, I'm ready. Hi, everybody. Uh, Can you make your uh, your screen uh, your uh, screen full? Right now it's full, but you see a small. Um, it's screen? smaller than the than the page, but uh, it can be seen. All right, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, uh, it's okay then. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alejandro, uh, for the presentation. Thank you, Igor and Roman, for the opportunity to participate in this nice workshop. As, an, as uh, Alejandro mentioned, uh, today I will talk about uh, the magnetized QCD phase diagram from the point of view of the chiral symmetry restoration. This is a work um, that uh, my colleagues, uh, Alejandro Yala, Cesario Dominguez, uh, Marcelo Leve, and Renato Zamora, and I, did some years uh, ago. Um, uh, this work is um, try to explore the consequence to include the magnetic effect effects in the QCD phase diagram um, uh, when we only consider uh, the the chiral symmetry restoration in a model that uh, is the linear sigma model with quarks and. Um, uh, see if, if the phase transition, the, the, the temperature of this phase transition is modified or not, and if, if the critical endpoint uh, moves or not as a consequence of this magnetic field. So let me, uh, oops, okay, let me start. This is the outline of, of my talk. Uh, at the beginning, I will give a very uh, we still see the first slide. Luis, it showing? seems that your slide didn't change. Oh, come on. Okay. I think you're sharing the wrong screen. There. There is fine. There. Mm -hmm. Let me see if, if I can. Uh, probably like just just to try to change slides, probably. Okay, now yeah, yeah. we can. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it's okay. Go ahead. All right. So this is the outline of my talk. At the beginning, I will give a, a small motivation. After that, I will talk about the magnetic fields and um, how we can produce, where we can produce these magnetic fields. Uh, after that, I will talk about a little bit of this uh, model, the linear sigma model with quarks. Um, and after that, I will uh, show our results, actually the QCD phase diagram at, in the presence of magnetic field and um, the plots that we, uh, got from, from this analysis uh, that I show in the, in the result sections. So let me start with these uh, small comments. I think we are in a grand uh, opportunity era. Um, we are able to uh, reproduce the universe microseconds after the Big Bang by colliding heavy ion uh, nuclei by some uh, huge uh, experiments like RIC and LHC uh, we we now uh, have a lot of answers from questions about the, the behavior of the strongly interactive matter in extreme in extreme conditions, high temperatures, and uh, for for this decade maybe uh, when we have information enough information to know what happened when we put this kind of system at a other kind, kind of extreme condition like high densities, high baryonic densities, and this will be provided by experiment like NICA, FAIR, or Jade Park. So I think we are uh, in a really interesting uh, times to, to, to know more about this kind of, of systems. All the information about this strongly interactive matter can be condensed in something that we call the QCD phase diagram. This phase diagram that I show here in this uh, figure is a plot where the horizontal axis has the uh, baryon chemical potential, the vertical axis has the temperature, two microscopic variables. 
that tell us what happened with a many body system made of strong interactive particles. And we know that uh, low energies, uh, we have uh, this um, matter made of hadrons, actually, baryons or mesons. But when we increase the energy or put this kind of system in extreme conditions, we are able to produce the quark gluon plasma. That means we are able to describe this kind of system in terms of a quarks or gluons in terms uh, as a degrees of freedoms. It's a general view. Um, but uh, some other um, uh, properties or features of this uh, uh, phase diagram is that at low, uh, at zero chemical potential or low chemical potential, we know that the phase transition is a crossover. But from the other side, when the, the temperature is low and the quark chemical, the, the baryon chemical potential, sorry, is uh, large, from uh, models, effective models, we know that uh, the phase transition could be a uh, 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 first order phase transition. So with this idea, uh, we, we have something um, that uh, is, is, is important. At some point, this first order uh, phase transition disappears or, or ends. That point is the critical endpoint in this phase diagram and it starts from that point, the crossover. Where is located that point, we don't know. And uh, the, the, the experiments like uh, Nika or FAIR or the second stage of the big energy scan, scan at, at RIC probably uh, will provide some information about um, where this point is located. But at this stage, we don't know where it is, but uh, assume we assume that exists that point. And uh, for, for our analysis, when we include the magnetic field, we want to know if these lines moves or not when the magnetic field uh, increases or not, and if the critical endpoint moves or not when we uh, put the uh, information of the magnetic field. How we can tackle this kind of, of uh, transition where we have two ways to uh, uh, analyze. One of them is uh, try to understand where the chiral symmetry is, rest, uh, is restored, or the other uh, idea is try to see where happens the deconfinement confinement transition uh, in, in this uh, phase diagram. For, for uh, this work, we concentrate only in the chiral symmetry restoration. We do not uh, talk about the deconfinement confinement transition. Um, how we can create this quark one plasma? Actually, we have two uh, physical system. And one is the heavy ion collisions. Um, when we have a large energy in the in the in the collision, where well, uh, we are able to obtain high temperatures in this system. But other uh, kind of system is the um, neutron start that uh, in the court we assume that the density is really uh, high and maybe we can find some um, a kind of uh, a, a system made of quarks and gluons as a degrees of freedoms. Um, but the question is, this kind of, of, of uh, system uh, is enough only try to understand what happened with the, uh, uh, the strong force, the strong interaction, or we need to include more information in this kind of system. And uh, for that, maybe this table is uh, very useful to, to see that the magnetic field, the magnetic field can uh, provide uh, some extra ingredient, an important extra ingredient in the analysis of these kind of systems, because in the uh, magnetars or neutron stars, um, and in the heavy ion collision, we are able to produce a really huge uh, 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 magnetic field in this kind of, of systems. In particular, we know that in uh, uh, heavy ion collisions, when the collision is not central or is peripheral, uh, the collision, we have uh, the possibility to create a really uh, a strong magnetic field due to the spectators in this uh, kind of, of collision or other possibility is um, because the, 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 the reaction has a, a total angular momentum because this 
uh, system has an electric charge uh, as, uh, inside, well, a magnetic field can be produced here. So, um, well, if, if the magnetic field is strong and can be considered as an as a, um, important ingredient here, there are two uh, questions um, that uh, have in, in, in this um, QCD phase diagram. The first one is, is the, the temperature, the critical temperature modified by the strong magnetic field? And the other one is, does the critical endpoint move due to the strength of the magnetic field? Um, and we try to answer both uh, questions in our analysis. Let me say something else. Um, some years ago, uh, from a uh, lattice QCD analysis, we know, um, we knew about a, a, a new phenomenon that was the uh, inverse catalysis, uh, inverse magnetic catalysis that uh, we can understand from these two uh, plots that I show here. The first one here at the top is um, the light quark condensate uh, as a function of the temperature for three different uh, magnetic uh, fields values. And we can notice if we are around the, um, the critical temperature or above, this uh, condensate decrease, uh, decreases as a function of the magnetic uh, field. Other way to understand this uh, inverse magnetic catalysis is from uh, the analysis of the pseudo critical temperature. If we uh, analyze how behaves this pseudo critical temperature as a function of the magnetic field, we uh, notice a decreasing behavior of this temperature. So with that, um, our uh, ideas what was try to, to see what happened in the linear sigma model when we analyze the restoration of the uh, chiral symmetry. And uh, for that, well, uh, we, we use an effective approach, as I mentioned, in the linear sigma model with quarks. We focusing or we are uh, focused in, in the chiral symmetry restoration phenomena. We compute the effective potential uh, or free energy of our system beyond the mean field approximation at uh, T, uh, the temperature, the quark chemical potential, and the magnetic field different from zero. And we construct or build the magnetic, uh, the magnetized effective QCD phase diagram. So let me try to explain a little more about this model. This is an effective model for low energies uh, that try to, uh, do, try to do a mimic of the QCD in the sector of uh, the fermion sector. And this is a renormalizable uh, theory, implement the idea of the chiral symmetry uh, we consider the effects of quarks and mesons on the chiral fence transition, and we have the possibility to uh, um, uh, 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 um, analyze the spontaneous symmetry breaking in this kind of system. Uh, the Lagrangian of this model is, is this one that I uh, show here. Uh, you can uh, notice that we have um, three kinds of fields, the meson, uh, the sigma meson field, the pions, the neutral, the, the, the plus and minus um, pion uh, uh, here, and the, the quarks uh, or the fermion field that appear here. Uh, the, we have a, a covariant derivative, that means we include the information of the magnetic field through this uh, potential. Uh, um, other thing that we use here is in order to allow for spontaneous symmetry breaking, we do a shift in the direction of the sigma field. And with that, uh, we are able to write this sigma field as a sigma plus B, where B is the vacuum expectation value of our theory. And B can, uh, can uh, later identify as the order parameter of the theory. After the shift, well, the Lagrangian uh, is varying like here, that I present here. Notice this last term in the Lagrangian is um, the, the classical um, term or the three level contribution to the, uh, F, uh, to the potential uh, that has this, this shape that I present here with a minimum different from zero. 
another important thing here is after that shift, um, the, the, we, we have dynamical masses for all the fields in our model, the sigma uh, meson has this uh, mass, dynamical mass, the pions and the fermions. That depends of this uh, backing expectation value. Um, uh, other thing uh, important here is we have two couplings and the, the self uh, couplings, the couplings between uh, uh, bosons and the coupling between fermions and bosons, that is this G. Uh, we have this squared mass parameter in, in the Lagrangian. Um, and okay, that, that's all about this linear sigma model. In order to have the, the quantum corrections, we need to uh, uh, take the perturbative contribution. The first one is the one loop contribution because we have two kind of particles, bosons and fermions. Well, we have two contributions, the bosonic contribution to the effective potential and the fermion contribution to the effective potential. Um, and if we uh, take only the one loop contribution, well, this is called the mean field approximation. We are working in the imaginary time formalis uh, and all the propagators that we uh, use here are written in the uh, Schwinger proper time formalis. Um, and at this point, if we consider only the mean field approximation, is like try to uh, describe our system like a ideal gas without any interactions. And that maybe is not the best way to describe what happened in this kind of system. So in order to describe, to have a better dis description of our system, we need to include in some way the idea of that this particle interact. So the first step to go beyond the mean field theory is uh, take the next term in the perturbative series and that term is the ring diagrams uh, as show uh, many years ago Dolan and Jakif in that paper that I write here. And uh, if we include these ring diagrams, actually we are uh, uh, including the screening properties of the plasma because as you can see here with the contribution of these rings, uh, we, we, we are able to, to include the information of the self energy of these bosons that I graded here at the bottom of this slide. Uh, at this point, I need to say something. All the computation here is uh, in the limit where the temperature is the largest scale uh, compared with other uh, energy scale like uh, magnetic field or the uh, quark chemical potential that we include here. Uh, so this is the, the first step to go beyond the mean field theory, but the next or the second step is include the effective coping constants. So we need to, we want to include the thermomagnetic corrections to these uh, lambda and G couplings um, at one loop order. Uh, 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 we, we do this, uh, we did this um, computation. Yeah, let me start with these lambda couplings, the correction, the one loop correction are encoded in, in these um, uh, Feynman diagrams. The sum of, of all of them are included in this expression. You can see that we have two options. Uh, one option is, is uh, if the um, propagators inside of this loop are uh, neutral particles or if that has um, uh, charged particles, well, we need to differentiate both because one uh, provides information about the magnetic field and the other one doesn't include uh, that information. And uh, well, this is the explicit uh, contribution for the lambda, for the effective uh, lambda with this function i and, and j here. Um, but uh, at the same time, we need to compute the G coupling constant, the correction, the thermo thermomagnetic corrections uh, in these uh, nine um, uh, Feynman diagrams. And uh, the uh, result is, is this one that I write here. Both corrections are computed 
in the limit where the magnetic, sorry, the temperature is the largest scale compared with any other scale, and in the static uh, limit uh, in order to capture or have the, the, the most relevant contribution from these thermomagnetic uh, corrections. Um, so if we put all together in the expression for the effective potential, uh, the expression is this one that is a long expression, but in the next slide, let me uh, try to highlight each of the pieces of this uh, effective potential. The first one in red color that is here is the contribution at three level, the classical contribution. After that, in, in, in yellow color, we can find the contribution from the neutral uh, boson uh, particles, the sigma and the neutral pion that has the one loop correction and include this uh, orange, uh, the term in, in, in orange color that uh, provides the information of the ring diagram for that uh, particles. The next contribution in green color is the contribution from the uh, positive and negative pion that has the uh, contribution at one uh, loop but here is the contribution from the ring diagrams. Uh, the screen effects are encoded in here in, in this term. And the last contribution is, is here, uh, like um, a purple uh, color, um, that is from the uh, fermion uh, particles. You can see these fermion particles include the, the temperature contribution, the quark chemical potential contribution, and of course the magnetic field contributions here. So with we this, five minutes. Okay, thank you. With this idea, we need to, to see how we identify the pseudo critical temperature in this uh, analysis. Well, the criterion to find the temperature where the chiral symmetry restored is the following. The second derivative of the potential, the effective potential at V equal to zero is equal to zero. It means the curvature of the, our potential is equal to the mass square. So uh, in this, uh, this case is only valid when the restoration of the chiral symmetry is a second order phase transition, because in our model we have, we don't have a crossover, we have instead of that a second order phase transition. Um, other thing that we need to, to take in account is how we fix our parameter space. We have five parameters, two coupling constants, lambda and G, the critical temperature, at mu equal to zero, the parameter A, the, the square mass term uh, and the uh, magnetic field. So in order to try to fix uh, the, these parameters, we have, uh, for example, start with the boson thermal masses. This is the mass for the sigma of uh, meson and this is for the pions. And you can see is the dynamical masses at three level plus the contribution of the self energy. But at the phase transition, um, uh, the curvature of the effective potential vanishes for B equal to zero. So if we evaluate both contribution at B equal zero, the expression for both uh, kind of, of particles is the same. Notice that if we delete this part, is the same information from both uh, a kind of particles. And from that, we are able to, to have this expression, a ratio between A and the critical temperature at mu equals zero, that is equal to something that has the information of the two coupling constants. Another thing that we can use is from the vacuum boson masses, we can fix the value of A. The relation is, is this one that I present here at, at the bottom is the relation between the, the sigma mass and the pion mass. And with that, we are able to fix uh, A. Uh, the, the, the pseudo critical temperature at uh, 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 mu equal to zero, we, we can use the, the values provided by lattice QCD. And with that, we have only two free parameters, lambda and G, but from this equation, if we uh, choose one value on lambda, then we have a fixed value of G. The results are the following. Here is what happened with the effective uh, coupling constants. How is the thermomagnetic uh, correction? 
or how it behaves as a function of the magnetic field. You can see in both cases for lambda, for lambda and for G, the thermomagnetic correction decreases as a function of the magnetic field. That is uh, an important thing because we can analyze what happened with the pseudo critical temperature as a function of the magnetic field when we include that uh, effective uh, copings or without that effective copings. If we include the effective uh, copings, we have an, an inverse catalysis, uh, magnetic catalysis, the decreasing behavior of the temperature. But when we don't include that information, the effective coupling, we have the opposite behavior. That means a magnetic catalysis that is not a proper or correct uh, behavior. And finally, when we uh, put all the information and try to analyze what happened in a, in a uh, phase diagram uh, with the uh, horizontal axis is the quark chemical potential and the vertical axis is the uh, critical temperature both divide by the critical temperature at mu equal to zero, we have the, 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 the following things. Um, if the magnetic field increases, the uh, pseudo critical temperature decreases. That is nice. But the other important thing is the critical endpoints moves uh, toward lower value of the quark chemical potential and large value of the critical temperature. That is something that confirms some result from lattice QCD that uh, uh, was reported some years ago. As a conclusion, well, we are working in the linear sigma model compared to quarks at um, magnetic, field, magnetic field equal to zero. The critical endpoint is located uh, more or less in the region formed by mathematical extension of lattice analysis. Uh, we compute the effective potential for a weak magnetic field and include the plasma screening effects through the boson self energy and very important through the thermomagnetic correction of the coupling constant. Uh, the corrections in this coupling uh, are crucial to obtain the inverse magnetic catalysis and the model shows in uh, quantitative terms the uh, critical endpoints moves toward lower values of the critical quark uh, chemical potential and larger values of the uh, critical temperature as the field intensity increases. Uh, how we interpret these results? Well, the features of the phase diagram can be uh, understand or understood in general terms. The first one is the magnetic field produce a dimension reduction. Virtual charges are effectively constrained to occupy Landau levels. Uh, their motion is restricted to planes. And on average, these particles lie closer to each other. How we, can, how we can translate this information to QCD? Well, the quarks in presence of magnetic field get closer to each other. The strength of the interaction gets reduced and this phenomenon should manifest in the weakening of the quark condensate with the increases of the magnetic field. This is the reference and here uh, I present my emails. If you have any question or doubts, you can uh, send me an email and thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Luis, for staying on time. Um, I think we have time for a couple of questions. I see one raised hand. Um, Nuxar, please. Uh, we can't hear you, Nuxar. Yeah, she had actually problems with his mic before. Probably uh, they persist to be a problem, I'm not sure. If, if you want, you can uh, send your question through the chat and perhaps um, either address it to the speaker or we can discuss it uh, during the discussion session. Um, anybody else has a question? I have a question, but I cannot raise the hand apparently uh, because <laughs> I was made a co-host. I see, um, go ahead. Quick question. Um, you were considering only weak magnetic field, uh, but your interpretation was in terms of the dimensional reduction. Strictly speaking, at weak magnetic field, that is not really a very strong effect. So I wonder if that interpretation uh, is, is truly uh, valid, that uh, the quarks become closer to each other and uh, the screening, uh, anti-screening uh, of QCD works. Yeah, well, actually, the interpretation uh, is like in, in the same idea that if we increase the magnetic field, we notice that change 
when the magnetic field is small, uh, we, we cannot notice that modification. So in that sense, when we increase the magnetic field, we are able to think that, well, these Landau levels are uh, it, it more um, important, these, these, uh, these levels in this transverse plane, and they uh, follow these orbits around the, the, the magnetic field in a semi-classical way, right? Uh, well, the, the reason I'm asking is that you are not using Landau levels. You are using the expansion in powers of magnetic field. Isn't that yeah, right? But, or... uh, it, it's true. But uh, that expansion can be work in terms of Landau levels, and we are able to obtain the same answer. Okay. May, may I have a question? Uh, yes, please. Who's, who's speaking? Norberto Scopola. Hi. Ah, Norberto. Hi, yes, please. Uh, yes, uh, two slides ago, you showed the phase diagram as a function of the magnetic field. Right. Uh, what is B there, this, the, the small letter B? Ah, yeah, sure. Sorry for, uh, I didn't say nothing about the notation. B is the uh, strength of the magnetic field divided by A squared. A squared is the mass uh, square parameter that we fix. Uh, from this value also. So can you translate that in, the, in GV or GV square or something? In GV, uh, let me remember what is the value of A. A is around um, two, two, between 250 and 300 MeVs. If we, if we square that value, uh, the magnetic field is, 0 0.3 and 0 0.6 times 300 MeV square. Uh -huh. So th there are really very small magnetic fields. Yes, the, the reason is because we are working in the approximation where the temperature is uh, larger than the magnetic field. Yeah, but well, then it means that uh, you have a huge effect because you have a reduced a reduction of around 10 percent yeah but but the, the the huge effect is because how we can uh, uh choose the values of lambda and g as as i mentioned at the end uh we have uh the as a free parameters lambda and g we can play with that uh, values and find some other uh, set of values that produce other kind of uh, of uh, behavior, the same behavior, but uh, the, maybe is not uh, like this one. For example, this is other set of parameters that you can see the critical endpoint moves, but not goes to zero like this example. Uh, for that, we need to uh, analyze the complete uh, QCD phase diagram, taking account the large uh, 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 values of uh, quark chemical potential. And with that information, try to include some um, a, a other equation that fix this um, a coupling constants uh, in order to have a unique or a, a really good set of a, a, a values that tell us precisely we, where is this critical endpoint located and how the magnetic field modifies that uh, location. Yes, thank you very much. I see uh, Vivek has also uh, yeah. raised his hand, but um, can you be uh, brief? Hello, Vivek? Uh, you have your uh, microphone mute. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, am I audible? Yes. Hello? Now we can hear you. Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. So how, how does this Yukawa coupling of quarks uh, changes with the magnetic field, which gives the mass to the quarks? Which is the mass of the quarks? Well, uh, mass of the quark, I mean, I mean, constituent quarks. Constituent quarks. Look, when we um, uh, work in this uh, uh, model, Actually, we are working with these dynamical masses, right? And when the my, the the the, the, yeah. the, the yeah, uh, so I'm talking about the change of g g yeah. with respect to magnetic field. Ah, I, this I, I show yeah. here the, the plot is here. 
The change due to this magnetic field is not large. You can see it's less than um, less than ten five percent. Less than five percent is the change due to this magnetic field. It's small, but actually, uh, actually, in usual lin uh, linear sigma model, this inverse magnetic catalysis is not found. So it's really very good thing that. Uh, uh, here with these corrections, we are finding uh, in the sigma model inverse magnetic catalysis. Yes, the key was if we include this information, we are able to obtain the inverse catalytic man, man, uh, uh, catalysis. Without that information, without the information of this effective complex, we are not able to obtain that behavior. All right, thank you very much, Luis. Thank oh. you uh, to, uh, to um, uh, everybody that asked questions, but we, we need to move, move forward. So we thank the speaker.